This video demonstrates how to navigate the PER worksheet. My name is Marietta Orlowski, and I'm an Associate Professor in Population and Public Health Sciences at Wright State University, and I'm the co-creator of this worksheet. The PER worksheet is a tool that helps public health professionals sort and categorize various factors that influence health behavior. It takes constructs from across various health behavior theories and organizes them into common, easy to understand categories. The PER worksheet is organized by a target behavior and three columns of factors. And these elements are listed up top within the navigation bars. These columns use the terms of the pre-seed, proceed model developed by Dr. Larry Green for predisposing, enabling, and reinforcing factors. Tab one, takes us to the place where we record three pieces of information, a target behavior, a target audience, and other key individuals. In the example that we'll be showing today, our target behavior will be smoking, cigarettes, our target audience will be young, pregnant women, and other key individuals are people that play a role in the health behavior, but they're not the, the target audience. So in our example, it will be a spouse or a partner, and um, a healthcare provider. The next column, tab two, are predisposing factors. Predisposing factors, each of the next three columns includes a definition of the term. So here, we're reminded that predisposing factors are cognitive, affective, and sociodemographic factors that contribute to a person's motivation to act. The easy to understand prompts are knowledge, beliefs and attitudes, intention, demographics, and in this first column, there's an other category. And we'll give an example here in just a minute. What, we're going, what we wanna do in populating these columns is list factors that are associated with the behavior into the correct or corresponding category. Knowledge is a, tricky, is a tricky category. Remember to insert knowledge that is related to the health behavior. For most behaviors, this category is surprisingly small. Knowledge is procedural, risk-related, and resource-related. Beliefs tends to be a much larger category. So an example of a belief related to smoking in young women might be her confidence for quitting. And so that's self-efficacy for quitting. Another belief that might be related to a woman smoking during pregnancy is her beliefs about the harmful effects on the infant or on the child, on the unborn child. The other categories and predisposing factors are intention, demographics, and other. I want to give you an example of demographic. Age is often a demographic that we see associated with health behavior, and in women who smoke, um, the younger the woman, uh, the, the, one, the younger the woman is during her pregnancy, the, the more likely she is um, to smoke. Other is just that broad range of factors that they're really behavior specific and audience specific. So in our example, um, an example might be the length of time that a woman has smoked. Research has shown that if a woman has smoked more than uh, 10 or more years, it's more difficult for her to quit smoking, and that means that she's more likely to smoke during pregnancy. Another other factor, it predisposes a woman to smoking you know, during pregnancy, but it do, it's not really a knowledge or belief or a demographic, and that is whether the uh, pregnancy was planned. So we'll just insert planned pregnancy. And that's the predisposing column. 
Let's move to the enabling column. So we'll move up here to the top tab. And enabling factors are skills and resources that facilitate the completion of a health behavior. Theoretical constructs from the social cognitive theory, social networks, and behavioral economics provide rich detail for the factors that go into these categories. Enabling factors are also, also associated with the stage of preparation and action. For our behavior of smoking during pregnancy by young women, the prompts within enabling factors are skills, resources, and social and physical environmental factors. For our behavior, smoking during pregnancy by young women, a skill that we might find uh, associated with that behavior are coping skills. So we would enter that. Or trigger management skills. Resources um, just uh, can be uh, as barriers or facilitators, meaning that if that resource is there um, for the person or in their environment, it can be a barrier, or if it's there, it can be a facilitator of the behavior. So all of these um, factors that we're listing vary across a continuum, and usually that's more relevant in the resource category as well as the reinforcements. The next category, social and physical environment, um, is new to the form. Given our understanding of social networks and the physical environment, um, we added this factor as a prompt or as a reminder to program planners to um, include uh, factors in this category. For smoking by young women, um, there may not be as many physical environment factors, but there certainly are social environmental factors. And one in this category that we'll use is partner smoking behavior during the pregnancy. That if a partner um, smokes um, and the amount of smoke and the places that they smoke, um, that can influence uh, a woman's smoking status during, during her pregnancy. So let's move to the third column, which is the fourth tab, reinforcing factors. So we'll move up top. Reinforcing factors are reminders, feedbacks, and support associated with the continuation of the health behavior. This column is associated with the stage of maintenance. Cues to act, nudges, reinforcements are constructs from behavior change theory that fit into this column. The prompts, those easy to understand categories, are reminders, reinforcements, and social support. An entry from our example would be a reminder. Um, again, reminders are cues to act, nudges, prompts, however you want to uh, think about it. Um, so the entry that we're going to put here is the healthcare provider asking about smoking status. Research has so shown that when a healthcare provider um, asks women or follows up about their smoking status, um, it can influence the behavior. So those are, so we've completed our behavior are predisposing, enabling, and reinforcing factors. The last step in using this interactive form is to go to the worksheet tab. On the worksheet tab, you can see that it's been populated by the information that we included in the previous tabs. Here is our target behavior. Here is our target audience. And here are the other key individuals that we're considering as we try to understand this behavior. You can see that the entries that we typed in have populated into the correct categories. One helpful and interesting thing about this last page is that we can also edit on this page. One of the ways that folks um, use this worksheet is not just to capture information about what influences behavior, but also the source. So we can go in here and add an author.
So now I am reminded of the source. And I can do that for all, for all the entries. When this form is complete, it gives a picture of the factors or the mechanisms that influence behavior. It groups a variety of theoretically based factors into actionable categories. So beliefs will be grouped together, demographics, things like skills and resources. By understanding what drives the behavior, we can then develop or adopt programs that target the correct antecedents or factors. The completed form also introduces a preliminary sequence of the factors. It groups predisposing, enabling, and reinforcing factors that also align to stages of change, which we know provides a framework for, for that sequencing. We can then use these categories and sequence to develop our conceptual model of the mechanisms that influence health behavior. Thanks for listening. I hope that the PER worksheet helps you and your colleagues incorporate health behavior theory and research into your program planning.